In this video we're going to look at the process for two-sided machining. I'm going to start with a short slideshow where we introduce the general concepts behind this and some of the things you need to be aware of to make sure you're successful. Then we're going to look at a part in the software to examine this process in action. So what exactly is two-sided machining? Let's look at the general concept. We're going to have a single piece of material on one side we're going to cut a set of toolpaths. Then we're going to take that material off the machine and we're going to flip it over and relocate it on the machine in such a way that we can accurately cut another set of toolpaths on the other side so that they're registered with the first set. This of course requires us to have exact alignment between the top and the bottom of the part after we've flipped it over. And what we're going to look at here is one method that we can do that. The nice thing about this process is you can end up with a part like you can see in the picture in the bottom right there where we've cut the joints for our box on one side of our material and the decoration on the other. So the typical process we use to achieve this alignment is to start by laying out the vectors for the first side that we want to machine. Then we need to make a copy of the file so that we have a safe copy and create the vectors for side 2 and these will line up with the vectors from side 1. Now to replicate the material being flipped over in a virtual environment of the software then we mirror the vectors and it's very important that you use the option to flip about job center as you can see in the presentation there. It doesn't matter whether you flip horizontally or vertically but it is useful to make a note of that. One useful technique to make sure you've mirrored the parts you intended is to add some text or a marker so that you can see clearly when it's reversed. So as I said before and I just want to reiterate make sure that you've saved two separate files one for the front and one for the back when you've got those accurately in position based on flipping the material in between cutting the two files then you can create the toolpaths for the parts on each side output those separately and you should be able to run the toolpaths for side 1, flip the job over and run the toolpaths for side 2. Now the key question at this stage is how when I flip the part on the machine do I get the two to line up the same way that we've mirrored them in the software. The method we're going to talk about uses dowel holes to help you align the XY location when you turn that part over. Here you can see a picture of the part and on side one there, there's a hole we've cut for the dowel. Here is the sacrifice sheet on our machine and you can see we've machined two dowel holes in there, inserted the dowels and now when we flip the part over it should locate correctly on those two locations. Now there's two ways to approach this. Option one is when you're cutting side one of your job to machine all the way through the part and into the spoil board and use the same XY0 position for both sets of toolpaths. If you are going to do that you need to have a symmetrical hole pattern so that the positions are in the same location when you flip it over. You also need to make sure that when you're doing this that you cut both side one and side two in the same session of machining on your CNC. This wouldn't allow you to stop the CNC in between and switch it off unless you could very accurately reposition the XY0 to the same location. To get around that we have another option and this is to drill partially through the first side and then separately drill the holes into the spoil board so they're not done as a single operation. There's a couple of benefits to this. It allows us to use a non-symmetrical hole pattern because we're going to be able to reverse that pattern and machine it into the spoil board when we flip the part over. That's nice to use a non-symmetrical pattern because we can ensure that when we flip our material that we only have one way that we could possibly relocate it onto our machine surface. So that sort of eliminates the fact that we might flip it in the wrong direction or having to worry about whether we've gone horizontally or vertically. The other benefit to this method is I don't need to run the toolpaths concurrently maintaining the XY0 position between the top and the bottom. I can cut side one on one day 
with this drill pattern machined into the top for the dowels then I can take the material off, I could run other jobs, I could work other things, have the machine switched off, come back to it another day and then the first operation on that day would be to machine the mirror of the dowel pattern into my sacrifice sheet then I know I could accurately locate what I've machined first and then machine all the toolpaths for that other side there and that everything would line up correctly. The process that we've described here does require me to have a sacrifice sheet on the bed of my CNC to be able to machine these dowel holes into. If your machine doesn't have a sacrifice sheet you could attach a temporary one by clamping a piece of MDF down. An alternate method that you could also use is to create a corner jig and just ensure that you can pre-size your material very accurately and you can set your XY0 to the corner of that jig very accurately as well. So this method, when done correctly, will give you excellent alignment in X and Y. The other thing to think about is your alignment in Z. One of the methods I use is for the front, I set the Z0 off the top of my material. Then for the back, I set the Z0 off the machine bed. In effect, this ensures that you're always referencing from the same face of your material, because if you remember, between cutting the toolpaths for the front and cutting the toolpaths for the back, we're going to flip our material over, and in effect, by changing these zero, Z0 positions, that's what you're doing in the software. Then as you calculate your toolpaths, it's important to be aware of the depths of cut you're using. You want to ensure that you leave an appropriate thickness of material on areas that you're cutting from both sides, and that you make sure you don't cut all the way through the part unless you meant to. Lastly, it's good to make sure you measure your material thickness very accurately. Something else you may do if your material is not particularly flat is when you're cutting side one, you may want to surface that side first in order to make sure you get a good reference face when you flip the part over. So that pretty much concludes our slideshow part of this tutorial. Just to note that this is just one of the strategies that you could use to do two-sided machining. There are many other ways that will work and this is just intended as a guide and one potential way that you could explore. Really the key though is just making sure that you have that alignment when you flip the parts over. So if you have another method that would do that, then that would be fine. Secondly, the file we're going to look at in a minute is actually based on one of the free monthly project files that is available for free download from the Vectric website. This is actually a project called Cool Cubes, so if you want to check that out, go to the website and look for the free projects. So here we're going to start a copy of the software now and take a look at this two-sided process in action. So let's click on the icon to open an existing file and we'll select the file coolcubesedit.crv from the project folder and hit open. Now here we're looking at our overall design layout. This is a box with four sides as we can see here and a top. The bottom of it is cut separately, it's just a simple square. Now we've laid the vectors out in such a way that it's almost like we're looking through the part. If we come up to the layer manager and I just switch off some of the layers we've got here I can see there are the vectors for side one. We're going to pocket in these to create the jointing for our box. Then over that, in the, in the correct position, we've drawn the vectors for side two, which is going to be the decoration on the other side of the material. Then we've, in addition, added some text, which will be helpful to us when we flip the part over. And also these dowel hole locations as well. So they're all on separate layers, as we can see there. So at this point, we have the vectors we need to cut side one. So let's just switch off the layer for side two there and close this. And we'll go up to File, Save As. And I want to make a copy of this. I'm just going to call it Cool Cubes Edit underscore side one and hit Save. Now for side two, if you remember from our slideshow, we need to take the part and mirror it and this is going to basically replicate the action of taking the material off and flipping it over. To do this I want to make sure that I have all the objects in my design visible so I'm going to switch on all the layers. Then I want to select all these vectors so I can do that with the shortcut key Control A or I could box select or I could come up to edit select all vectors. Any one of those options should work. 
If I had any 3D entities in my job, then I'd need to make sure the grayscales for those were selected so that we could mirror those as well. So once you've selected all the objects in the 2D view, we're going to come over to the Mirror Selected Objects command. In here it's very important that we check this box to flip about Job Center and that we uncheck the box to create a mirrored copy. Now I can choose to flip horizontal or vertical, it doesn't really matter as long as I replicate that same direction of rotation when I take my material off the machine and turn it over to cut the other side. Here we'll flip horizontally, so there I can see all my parts of mirrored and what's helpful to me is to see that the text is mirrored here, so this is just a useful indicator to show me that I've mirrored the part over. The fact the top has moved over to the left from the right should also be a good indicator. Now I can close this and at this point let's switch off the vectors for side 1 because we have all the vectors we need to machine side 2, so to machine the decoration on the other side of the material. So let's come up and go to File, Save As and now we'll save a copy of the file called Side 2 and hit Save. Now we've got two copies of our file, one with the vectors and orientation for side one of the material and then the other one with the vectors and orientation for side two. Let's close side two for a moment and we'll come down to our recently opened list and we'll choose the file for side one again. So we'll come back to the set of vectors that we had before we mirrored them over. Now we're ready to calculate the toolpaths for this side, so we'll come up and click on the icon to switch to the toolpaths tab. First I want to click and select this horizontal set of vectors. I'm going to come over to the pocket toolpath. We're just going to create a pocket an eighth of an inch deep. I'm going to use the quarter inch M mill. I'll just take the default settings for that. And I'm going to offset to machine out this pocket. We'll just call that pocket one and hit calculate. Software's automatically opened the 3D view and the preview toolpath form. We can preview that to take a look at our first toolpath. Now I'm going to hit close on the preview toolpath form. I'm going to come back to the 2D view and this time I want to select these other vectors. To do that I'm going to start over on the right hand side and click and drag up and to the left just partially enclosing those eight boxes. Now I'm going to come back to my pocket toolpath. I'm going to cut out, or sorry, I'm going to pocket down to a depth of 0.25 of an inch. Again with this quarter inch end mill, again with the offset pattern. We'll call that pocket 2 and hit calculate there. Now we can preview that and take a look. We can see that that is all the toolpaths we're going to need for machining this side of our boxes. So this will give us the jointing that will allow these sides to slot together. At the moment I'm not worrying about the fact that these are being cut out. We're going to do that by cutting out from the other side. Now the last thing I need though on this side is to machine the dowel holes. And what we're going to use in this example is the process where we machine all the way through the board into the table from this side to give us those dowel locations because we're using two symmetrical holes. So I need to come back up to the 2D view. I'm going to select the two dowel holes there each side. Let's just close the preview toolpath form. Now depending on the size of the holes that we've got there, we might want to drill or profile. Now these have been made exactly to size. They're a quarter inch deep and that is the size of the dowels we're using as well. So I'm going to click on the icon here to create a drilling toolpath. I'm going to cut all the way through the material and into the sacrifice sheet. So I'm going to go one inch deep, start at zero, one inch deep. And we'll use this quarter inch drill that's selected here in, as the tool. So we'll just change this to drill dowels, hit calculate. The software should tell us that we're cutting through the material and I fully intend to do that in this case because I want to go into that sacrifice sheet. So if I hit OK, we preview it, we're only going to see it cutting through the material because it doesn't give us a representation of our sacrifice sheet on this side. So we'd make sure we held our board down we could output the toolpaths now, machine all these into the first side of material, then we could go ahead and take the material off, flip it over with the dowels in the sacrifice sheet in position so that these holes when we turn them over would locate accurately from the other side. I'm not going to save the toolpaths at this point for this but to do that if we just close there I would just select 
Click on Save Toolpaths, choose the appropriate post processor and hit Save. What I will do here though is just come up to File and Save so that we've saved a copy of Side 1 of the toolpaths there. You remember we're already working with a file that has the appropriate name. So now assuming that we think this side is finished, we can say File, Close and we could choose the file for Side 2. Now remember we've already gone through the process of mirroring this in order to replicate the process of flipping our material over so it should just be a case of calculating the toolpaths for this side of our job. So let's click on the icon to go over to the toolpaths tab and now we're cutting side 2 let's come up and click on the material setup icon here. What I want to do on this side is set my Z0 to the bottom of the block and again this is just the last part of replicating flipping this over so that I know my depths of cut will be referenced from the same face of the material. I'm happy with all the other settings I've got in here, one thing to be aware of is my home position would need to be above the thickness of the block here but we have quite a large value already set up for this. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now we're ready to calculate the toolpaths for this side so I'm going to carefully click and box select just the circles here so that they're completely enclosed. I'm going to come up and click on the icon to create a profile toolpath. I'm going to cut these down to a depth of 0.125, an eighth of an inch and I'm going to select a quarter inch ball nose tool so we can choose that from the tool database and hit OK. And I'm going to cut inside those vectors and I'm going to come down, I'm just going to take all the other default settings here and hit calculate. And all that's going to do, if we preview this, is just create a whole bunch of little decorative round shapes for me that will go on the outside of my box. Now if we come back to the 2D view, we can do our cutout pass. For this I'm going to carefully select the outside vectors here, so we'll just hold the shift key down and click on those to pick them. Let's close the profile tool pass form going to cut out the job, I want to go all the way through the material so I'm going to say Z equals and that will automatically pick up the thickness that I specified for my block. I'm going to select the quarter inch end mill again and hit OK. I'm going to cut on the outside of these shapes now. Now at this point I may want to add tabs to hold the part in place when I cut them out. And I would need to be quite careful about this in this case because if you remember on the other side of the job we've already pocketed out the edges here so I wouldn't want to add tabs on those edges because there might be no material left to hold the part in place. So these are the types of things that you need to be aware of when doing two-sided machining to make sure that you don't inadvertently try and get the software or to do something that is impossible in reality. So we're going to check the box here to add tabs to the toolpath. You can see that we've already got some tabs that have been added on here and as I suggested we haven't got any on the sides because that material is already being machined away. So these would have been added previously um, to these vectors which is why we've seen them appear now. I'm happy with the values we've got there. We'll call this profile cutout and hit the calculate button. Preview the selected toolpaths there and now we can see how our part's going to look when we do our machining from the other side of the job there. Now we'd simply take and output these toolpaths, save them with the appropriate post processor and once we've done the manual flipping process then we should be ready to cut this um, and everything should line up perfectly for us to assemble it once we're finished. So let's save a copy of this now, go to File, Save and so we have that in the project folder if you want to take a look at it with the toolpaths in it. And that concludes this brief overview of the process for doing two-sided machining. As I mentioned before this is just one method you could use and there are many others that would also be successful as well if you can guarantee to get this alignment when you turn the material over and cut the toolpaths for the other side. Thanks for watching the video.